deficit for four months of $3 billion. Our inspector bragged on his website that he was able to take out $100 billion from the economic stimulus bill. Well, you know, that budget would have been nearly closed, at least half of it, if he hadn't done that. And so, great, I'm glad that after the damage that was caused, he helped bring half of those. You, you believe, in other words, just so we're clear, you believe that that stimulus vote, the stimulus vote wouldn't have been necessary were it not for... No, it, absolutely. If we had not had his vote with others that absolutely let Wall Street gamble with the homes and the savings of the citizens of Pennsylvania, where they said, we don't have to know what you're doing up there, don't keep reserves, and then the failed tax and economic policy of Bush, every one of which he voted for, we never would have had to have an economic stimulus bill. And then, when he took out that $100 billion, the economic models show 900,000 more Americans are unemployed today than they would have otherwise been if that $100 billion got in. Look, I'm glad he did finally vote for it after the damage that he helped contribute to it. And that's the issue. Where's the accountability for that vote, where he let Wall Street be deregulated? where he actually said, you don't have to tell us what you're doing up there. Where's the accountability of his vote with George Bush for those failed economic and tax policies to where he actually tripled the debt and put on everyone standing here and our children about $17,000 of additional debt to pay off in the coming years. I believe in accountability. United States Navy, you run a ship aground, you're relieved for cause. I think we should welcome in our party, but to believe that this should be the leader after 30 years down there in Washington, D.C., and having advanced a Republican agenda, this should be the leader for the Democratic principles? No, I don't buy that. And neither the working families in Pennsylvania. It's time for a change. You've it truly it. is time. You've and, said I, and I think we should respect them, but his time has come and gone. I'm sorry, it's got to catch up earlier. You've said it again and again, you know that the establishment is behind Senator Specter. Are you worried that on Tuesday that means they're going to have the better get out of the vote operation, they're going to be able to bring their supporters to the polls? Well, look, people today have been so slammed, they've been so ripped apart, nobody is paying attention to an endorsement. I've said it before, nobody has grabbed me by the shoulder at VFW Post and said, Joe, who's endorsed you? Nobody has grabbed me in a park here and said, who endorsed you? But not the endorsement, the, the get out the vote operation. Yeah, the get out the vote operation is one where you pull people to the polls. But every Pennsylvanian I met is pretty independent minded. I'm not worried about it at all. Now, am I working my toes off from now on to then? Absolutely. Because until that ball gets in the end zone, as Bart Starr goes in behind Jack Kramer, you weren't born then. 64, as I remember, was the Green Bay no, back in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> so no, you know the yeah, game. Yeah. Until that ball's in the end zone, you just keep on working. But look, I understand and I respect the establishment. Congress I just disagree. Congress because it hasn't helped working families. There's Sorry, a sir. man out there that, that just having lunch, and he said he, he personally likes you as a candidate, but he's reluctant to, to vote for you because he thinks Arlen Specter has the, the, the clout on, on Capitol Hill to, to get things done, especially for Philadelphia. How do you overcome that? that argument among voters well, that... Well, I need to walk back down to him if you'll point him out and say, you know, it isn't about seniority, it's about public service. He is now, as you well know, 97th in seniority. There's only three more junior than him. And while he has brought some things home, let's give him credit. Also in this city, in the 30 years he's been senator, this city has lost over 100,000 jobs net. 11% of its jobs disappeared, 14% of its population disappeared. Across Pennsylvania, we have had half the job creation in 30 years of the national average, 30% for 6%. So bringing home what's needed to be brought home, which is policies that help working families is what's most needed. Look, he voted for large corporations to have a tax credit if they invest in a foreign factory. Mine is small business gets a 15% tax credit because that's what the majority of Pennsylvanians work and it's what creates 80% of all jobs. That's the difference in our approach. Right, but as you know, as you know, the Senate, it, it's it's built on, on how long you've been there, what committee assignments you have. It, it's it, that's how that's essentially how you get things done. And well that, I'm with every okay. single Pennsylvanian almost who said the Senate's broken. We need to reform that. Because too long it's been about deals, like the Democratic establishment saying, hey, look, 
um, we'll make a deal, Arlen. You come over to our side and we'll get a 60th vote. But what good did it do us? You won't make any deals if you're elected. I'll do principal compromise, and I have. I was the most productive legislator my first two years down there. But never a compromise a principal like Ben Nelson did was you get my vote or through extortion if you can just give me a goodie bag for my home. Look, we moved the first money into autism in 12 years in the federal government. You don't do that unless you can work with the other side. The first bill passed in 17 years on elder abuse. Why? Because Pennsylvania's had a 35% increase in elder abuse. You can work in a way that doesn't compromise principles. Congressman, it sounds like you... But have... if, if I could, but a deal to keep your job? Never. It sounds like you agree with some of the analysts out there that say this election is essentially a referendum on Senator Specter's service. If you like him, vote for him. If you don't like him, you're the alternative. It, it, it is a referendum on how broken Washington is. And yes, our inspector is a poster child, so to speak, for that. But do you really also, think that he says that he reaches across the aisle in the Senate and without him, he was a Republican when he voted for the stimulus, it wouldn't have gotten done? Well, again, you come back to a stimulus we wouldn't have needed if he hadn't voted lockstep with George Bush for every economic and tax policy. So he set the House on fire. Then he felt a little helpful at that time. Remember, he's also the senator who has helped lead the charge to the most right-wing conservative court we've had that is truly going to shape the character of America, probably more than any institution over the longer term. Look, it isn't just about reaching across the aisle, it's reaching across for the right policies. Take immigration. He said he supported, which I thought was a principal compromise between John McCain and Ted Kennedy. But when it came time to vote for it, he voted against it. So now we have Arizona having a wrong law, but it's understandable because the Senate doesn't have the courage of their convictions to seize problems because there might be a third rail and they might lose their elections in order to shape what's needed. Take this city. Half of the youth here don't graduate from high school. And yet he voted for the largest cut in education, in history of America for education. One third cut over seven years. But on the other hand, even though it's hard sometimes as you're going around, I have spoken about the issues that are needed. I went to the Education Committee. We found $62 billion in Pell Grants and Stafford loans without adding to the debt. It's my bill that actually has now made it mandatory. The Defense Department looks for a small business to do a contract before they give it to a big one. Yeah, issues like that can be affected in it. In it. It's, what, what do you do with your seniority? What do you do when you reach across the aisle? Do you wait to the end, like an economic stimulus bill after the damage has been done, take $100 billion out, and then say, well, I voted for it? Or do you prevent that economic stimulus bill from ever being needed? By standing up when you most need it. And that was, we needed him to stand up when George Bush was president. Against George Bush's policy.